We're now joined by the president's commander on the ground, Admiral Thad Allen. Good morning again, Admiral Allen. And I want to get to the situation in Florida, the situation with the Diamond Saw. But first, this nuclear option. Uh, what was your gut reaction when you first heard that some people were proposing plugging the leak with a nuclear explosion? Well, that hasn't been seriously briefed to me, George. Uh, I think we'd have to run out of a lot of things before we consider something like that. I, I think that's really on the peripheral of things we ought to be talking about right now. But it, it has worked at least once in the past. The Soviet Union tried it. And there have been conventional explosions that have been, been used to shut down wells. Uh, are you considering that? George, we don't know the condition of the well bore, uh, what happened before and after the explosion. We know from pumping the mud down and trying the top kill that we weren't able to maintain pressure over the uh, oil that's trying to be forced up. That's an indication there actually could be something wrong with the well casing and there could be open communication in the strata or the rock formations uh, below the seafloor. I don't think we want to take a chance of somehow disturbing that where the oil would have direct access to the seafloor. In my mind, that would be a pretty serious risk. So it could just be a catastrophe if you tried to blow it up. I, th I think it'd be pretty tough, yeah. So let's talk about where we are uh, right now. You now are no longer using the diamond saw and bringing in these giant shears. Where exactly uh, does that effort stand right now? Well, they lowered the shears down last night, uh, George. They encountered a hydraulic leak on the shears. They brought them back up. That's been repaired. The shears are, are, are back down there. If you can imagine uh, just a big pair of scissors uh, that are powered by immensely uh, uh, powerful hydraulics uh, horizontally placed around the uh, riser pipe. That's where they're at this morning. They're going to attempt to cut uh, shortly. They've got the uh, top hat containment device positioned over the top of the wellhead and they'll be able to lower that down on the lower marine riser uh, package as soon as they make that cut and that's uh, connected to a ship on the surface so it should be once they get the cut done we're hopeful they'll be able to engage in bringing the oil to the surface to start production sometime today so you expect that all to happen today well as you know uh, george uh, we have timelines and they encounter uh, technical difficulties they're doing things on the seafloor at five thousand feet that have never been attempted before in some cases so uh... they adapt they learn and they keep moving on they've got other devices that are a little larger in case the fits not right meanwhile we do see oil heading towards the beaches of florida ryan owens <coughs> reporting it could hit there as soon as tomorrow is everything in place to protect the shores as best you can well, we've had a southerly wind for the last few days, so the, uh, the spill, which was generally migrating to the west past the mouth of the Mississippi River, is now moving north towards Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. We've had some tar balls and some light sheening uh, show up on the, in Mississippi and uh, uh, south of Dolphin Island. Uh, we redeployed a, a massive amount of resources. Uh, we had flowed boom to uh, Louisiana when it was being impacted. We're flowing more boom back into Alabama this morning, and we've uh, dispatched a, uh, a group of Coast Guard cutters with skimming capability that are down there. We've got helicopters offshore that are doing surveillance. Coast Guard patrol boats that are us we're using for command and control, working with vessels of opportunity. These are local fishermen that we've uh, brought on board to help us. So uh, uh, the uh, the line is the picket line is established. Final question, uh, Tony Hayward, the head of uh, BP, made a remarkable admission to the Financial Times overnight, overnight. He said, what is undoubtedly true is that we did not have the tools you would want in your toolkit to deal with this uh, disaster. He's made many other statements over the course of the last several days that have brought him in for, for harsh criticism, including Congressman Melanchon on this show yesterday. He said it's time for Tony Hayward to go. Do you still have confidence in his ability to lead? Well, I, you know, there's a lot of talk about trust and confidence, uh, George. I, uh, I'm working the uh, problems on ground down here, working the response, uh, and those, that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to make sure that BP does what they're supposed to, uh, to conduct a proper oversight and make sure that they are responsible and we're accountable for doing that. Uh, I work uh, continuously with Tony Hayward, and I have and I will continue in the future. Uh, and uh, right now, the number one uh, goal that we have is to get this oil contained and get this cleanup done for the American people. Okay, Admiral, thanks very much.